We're seeing all over the world droughts like the very serious drought in California, the very serious drought in Sao Paulo, Brazil, the very serious droughts in Syria, Iraq, Iran, Afghanistan, Yemen that are destabilizing those countries. We're seeing massive floods like we saw in the Balkans last year or the massive floods that we saw in Japan. We're seeing the uh, this upheaval of our own winter weather system in New York with this unbelievable amount of snow and the uh, polar front uh, dipping so far south in the United States at the same time that Alaska is experiencing 40 degrees Fahrenheit yeah. above their normal temperatures. So a lot of uh, derangement of the climate system internationally. Uh, sir, you believe sustainable development is going to become the central policy issue framework for the next generation. How does that square with lack of jobs, deficits and such? Are they two sides of the same coin? Well, sustainable development says that we need to combine three things, economic growth, fairness and environmental sustainability. So it says economic growth, which we have by and large, it's not enough. If it's only for the top 1%, if the income gaps are widening, not good enough. And if it's destroying the climate or the land or the ocean chemistry, not good enough. So sustainable developments like, uh, well, you did all right on the first homework assignment, but you turned out the course is a lot harder than you thought because you have to get three things, not just one thing right. But that's the way we have to go because we're on a collision course with nature and our inequality in our economy is widening. We're not doing the job to make the kind of economy we really need. Sir, let's switch back to geopolitics for our last segment. You knew the late Russian opposition figure Boris Nemtsov. He was buried today. He was shot to death last week. What are your thoughts on his murder and what are your thoughts on the type of legacy he leaves behind in Russia? In the early days when I was working with uh, President Gorbachev and President Yeltsin uh, on uh, that terrible crisis uh, of the economy and helping to get a market economy started, Boris Nemtsov was one of the young, wonderful, honest leaders in the country. And he stayed that way all along. Others uh, became corrupted by what is an awfully lawless system uh, sometimes, but Boris Nemtsov was always telling the truth and he knew in recent weeks that telling the truth could cost him his life as he told people just before his death he thought that Putin might go after him and it's unbelievably tragic and dangerous what we're seeing. What's his legacy for the opposition in Russia? He will be remembered of course as one of the bravest figures of reform and the call for democracy and the call for economic freedom as well. He's a wonderful person. Will reformers now be hesitant to speak up, or does this embolden them to do much more? I don't know if anyone's emboldened. Everyone's frightened, uh, and the situation is certainly uh, not good, and it's dangerous. But uh, it's never going to be put down entirely, and Russia by itself has put itself in a dangerous position. Uh, it's also reeling right now economically. Yeah. Uh, the war in Ukraine uh, obviously is horrendous for Ukraine, but it's uh, been a big mistake for Russia as well.